Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. In this video, I want to talk about the four notes per string scale system. I think probably it's most mostly famous from Alan Holdsworth. And um, the way I use that might be a little bit different from uh, what you'll see in at least what I've seen in other places where it's being used, because I don't really use the scale system in itself as just an independent system that I'm working with and trying to make lines. For me, it's more something that I add on top of the scale positions that I already have. And uh, that makes it easier for me when I'm using this to play certain intervals, especially the diatonic fourth. And it's also helping me connect the different scale patterns that I'm using. It makes it easier for me to move freely around the neck and change position while I'm improvising. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, about interesting chord voicings and arpeggios, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. So if we take a G major or E minor scale, and then play that as four notes per string, then we get this. So as you can tell, there are quite a few quite heavy stretches in there, and uh, most of the time you're going to be stretching at least one fourth, and then of course in this case, I even have sort of the tritone in here. That's not really a useful stretch. I think also you'll find that a lot of the time when you're using the four notes per string uh, for while playing, then you're going to be up a little bit higher on the neck, and that's going to make it a little bit easier to work with because here it's not so difficult to stretch a fourth or even uh, an augmented fourth. The way I use this is combined with the way that I normally use scales, which is a three notes per string position system. Uh, so if I play the E minor or G major scale, up in uh, the seventh fret here, then that would be this scale. What you can do here is that you can actually make this into a position of four notes per string. And when you do that, then um, instead of moving, because the first example, it kept sort of two to the scale and we don't have any repeating notes. And that means that we're moving up the neck all the time. In this case, I'm going to sort of stick with the position and then I'm going to double notes on each string. So some of these are of course a little bit difficult to play still, because this is not the easiest way to play that. Uh, it probably helps if you find that you want to use stretches really a lot, it can actually help to sort of angle the guitar a little bit upwards, as you'll see with uh, classical technique. I don't really use that, um, but I also usually just get away with using these only on the higher frets, and that makes it a little bit easier to play. So just keep it in mind and watch out that you don't really strain your hand doing stuff like this, because it is something that you want to do when you're warmed up and you want to make sure that you're not hurting yourself. With this way of playing the scale, we now have easy access to playing some diatonic fourth intervals because they're put on one string and that makes it a little bit simpler to just make use of them. Of course, we still have the problem with the repeating note, which you can really hear when I do this. And that might not really be something you want to have in there while you're improvising. But at the same time, there's another way of looking at this that's really helpful because if we take the four note per string pattern, then I derived it from this. But if I take the upper three notes, then I get another pattern uh, that's also just three notes per string. So in that way, the four note per string pattern is just a combination of two of the other positions that I already use. So that means that it's containing this one. And this is something that I use really a lot because that means that when I'm playing in this position, I have, because I know the four note per string pattern as well, then I can just sort of open the hand, stretch out, and then I'm in another position. So in that way, it's just a way of sort of connecting these two positions and also making it possible to play notes from both of them without having to shift position, because that will of course be difficult. There's a difference between playing and, uh, let's see. So technically, that's a really useful thing to be able to do, that you just open up for the stretch and then use whatever is available here when it's convenient. And for the rest, you just go and stay in the position where that's working better for you.
So this example is also in the key of E minor. The other examples are going to go to other keys because I want to keep it easy to play and, and not too heavy on your hands. Uh, so I'm just really just starting out with this position, but immediately going to the stretch version of it. So from the E up to the A. And then what happens next is really just a G major 7 arpeggio. But then a position higher. Another stretch. And then I'm shifting position. Another G major 7 arpeggio. And then I'm using a position shift to go up and stretch up to get the A and then adding this E minor 13 version. This example is a 2-5-1 in the key of F major with an alto dominant. So I'm using, I'm actually starting off with using the four notes per string on the G minor already because the first part is just from D to G to B flat. So this way of playing um, a G minor uh, second inversion triad. And that's just coming out of basically this four notes per string pattern, which is one of the ones that are actually quite playable because you kind of have the second, the minor second in the middle. Then I continue with, uh, while you consider this, I think I see this more or less as a sort of fragment of the D minor pentatonic. So, and the reason why I'm seeing that is because if you play the D minor pentatonic scale as three notes per string, so you get this, and that's part of that. So that's how I tend to see that pattern actually. And D minor pentatonic is uh, it's not the most clear thing to play on a G minor chord, but it's it's a really good resource to add in there as well. Even though you kind of want to have a B flat also someplace. But I have that from the triad in the beginning. Then I go into the C7 alto line. That's first a D flat minor major arpeggio. Like this. Again using this area, this overview to transition from this position up to this one. And then I'm also using sort of a forward per string pattern on the last part of it. Uh, because using the E flat and then up to A flat, G flat, and then resolving that to the ninth on the F major seven, which is, in, is a G. Adding a chord and a bass note. This example is again using the four note per string idea on a two five one with an also dominant. So this time it's in the key of C and we start on D minor. And uh, the first part of it is really quite similar to the previous example because it's a D minor uh, second version triad, so A, D, F, and then uh, then kind of just using notes out of this position. So the E and the G, and then up to the A here, and here I stretch out of the position, up to the D again to get another fourth interval down to the C, and then we transition to the B7 altered. And that's first just a scale one, like this. And then we get this stack of uh, fourths, so a quarter arpeggio. And then resolving to the G on the C major 7. So what you want to notice with this is also that when you have these four note per string patterns, then sometimes the quarter arpeggios are really easy to play as um, two note per string arpeggios, so what we have here. And that can be useful to check out and see if you come up some stuff with. Maybe that's something to actually, that I can actually return to in another video and talk about how that works, because there are a few other ways of playing chordal harmony and chordal arpeggios than what we normally do, because we tend to sort of stick with the one note per string ideas. And some of the other ways of doing this are actually quite uh, practical on guitar, so that might be something. So if you want to see a video on that, then uh, please leave a comment on this video and then I'll return to that topic. In a moment. So that's a short insight in how I use four notes per string ideas and how it's for me something that I add on top of and really integrate with what I already use in the 
normal scale positions and the three notes per string scale patterns that I'm already using. I'm of course also interested to know if you're already using some four note per string ideas or maybe because the equivalent of this with pentatonic scales is really three notes per string pentatonic scales. So if you also use that, then that would actually also be something that would be interesting to know. Uh, and please leave a comment if you do, because we can all use some inspiration. It's something that's not being talked about really a lot, but there is a lot of stuff you can do with it if you feel comfortable making all these stretches, uh, which I think is becoming something that's much more common. It seems to me that uh, earlier that was not something that we tried to do. And also if you check sort of the older scale systems like the caged and stuff, they're really trying to avoid stretching as much as possible, where now it's just another resource that we're trying to explore and make use of with uh, technique and scale fingerings and stuff like that. So if you have an idea where you're using pentatonic scales, three notes per string or uh, four notes per string major scales, then uh, please leave a comment and uh, let, us, let the rest of us know because I'm sure more of us are curious, at least I am. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and this is the first time you see one of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. The videos I publish every week are on solid methods and good strategies for you to practice and improve and learn new things. And together we can explore a lot of interesting things about jazz guitar. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. I'm very grateful for the support that I'm getting from my patrons. And it's because of that that I can keep on making videos every week. If you want to join me over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and until next week.